Mass spectrometry interpretation. What is it? How does it work? And why is it useful? In order to analyze the characteristics of individual molecules, a mass spectrometer converts them to ions so that they can be moved about and manipulated by external electric and magnetic fields. These molecular ions are energetically unstable and some will break up into smaller pieces. By analyzing these different sized pieces, we can determine what molecule we are analyzing as well as what constituent parts it is made of. If you want to know more about how the mass spectrometer itself works, you can check out my video on Malditov, linked by the end of this one, which is one type of mass spectrometer. The device displays its results in a mass spectrograph. This mass spectrograph is presented as a vertical bar graph, in which each bar represents an ion having a specific mass to charge ratio, m slash z, and the length of the bar, or the height of the bar, I should say, indicates the relative abundance of that particular ion, the most frequent being assigned as 100. Modern mass spectrometers can distinguish or resolve ions differing by a single atomic mass unit, AMU. The highest mass ion is assumed to be the molecular compound in its entirety, and any lower mass ions are assumed to be fragments from that molecular ion. To decide where this fragmentation has occurred, one needs to consider the strength of the bonds inside of the molecule between the different atoms in that molecule. The best way to make sense of all of this is by examining a few examples. Let us start off nice and easy with carbon dioxide, CO2. Before anything else, it is wise to calculate the total molecular mass of the compound we are interested in, in this case CO2. Okay, so carbon has a molecular mass of 12 AMU and oxygen has a molecular mass of 16. We also know that we have two oxygen atoms in CO2, so therefore to calculate the total AMU, we have 12 plus 16 times 2. This comes out at 44 AMU. This means that what we're going to expect to see is that the bar furthest to the right, the largest one, is going to be 44 AMU. And would you look at that? So it is. Second, in order to figure out how the ionization process might break up the compound, let us take a look at its chemical bonds. Carbon dioxide is quite simple. It's simply a carbon with an oxygen on both sides of it. In other words, there's really only two ways to split this molecule. Either you split the bond between the oxygen and the carbon on the left side, or then you split it on the right side. In either one of these two cases, the result is going to be the same. Namely, we're going to be left with a CO plus an oxygen meaning that the molecular masses of these two compounds is going to be 28, again 12 plus 16, and 16, which is just oxygen, 16. And when we look at the graph, that is exactly right. In addition, we can infer that the complete carbon dioxide molecule is very stable. It's even the most stable, since it has the highest relative abundance. Okay, let us do one more example, this time using propane, C3H8. First, we will again calculate the total molecular mass of the compound. Here again, we have carbon, which has a molecular mass of 12, and we have hydrogen, which has a molecular mass of 1. So we have 3 carbons, 12 times 3, plus 8 hydrogens, 1 times 8. This results in a total of also 44 AMU. So again, this is what we're going to expect the staple furthest to the right or the largest one to equal, 44. And look at that, it does. Then second, we're going to look at the chemical bonds. So here we have CH3 bonded to CH2 bonded to CH3, and each of these carbon atoms are also bonded to their respective hydrogens, as you can see in the picture. So how do we think that this is going to break up? Well, one sure guess is probably that the bonds between the carbon in the middle and the carbons on the side, those are probably going to break. 
that would leave us with CH2 to CH3, which has a total molecular mass of 29, and an alone CH3, which has a molecular mass of 15. But now if we look at the graph, this is true, we can find those here, and they are the two most abundant ones, or not the two most abundant ones, CH3 isn't that abundant, but the 29 definitely is, the CH2 to CH3, that's very abundant. But what about all of these other lines? Well, these hydrogens can be knocked off as well. In addition, the bond between two of these carbons can be broken, and then a hydrogen can be knocked off as well. So in addition to what we saw there earlier, we can also have it so that first these two carbons, the bond between them get broken, and then uh, one or several of their hydrogens in addition also get knocked off. That is what we see in this graph here. This is why the relative abundance becomes very important, since it shows us the most likely formations of these different ions. However, still, as you can clearly see from this still relatively simple example, manually interpreting and analyzing these graphs quickly becomes extremely difficult. And these are just super simple chemical compounds. Imagine doing the same for big proteins or something similar, something that's just a little bit more complex. But there is a nice solution. Instead of analyzing these bar graphs and trying to build a molecule from the ground up, the better way to do it, and the way you actually do it, is that you have ready-made models in databases or libraries that you just compare to. It's a little bit similar to how you can instantly recognize a face that you already know. It's not quite the same, but you get the idea. This is how the technique can be utilized more efficiently in order to accurately identify, for example, proteins. This, however, requires a large enough database to compare to. This is vital. At least 10 or more of the reference spectra. Another way to ensure correct identification is to use so-called peptide mass fingerprinting, which I luckily have also covered. And if you want to check out that, as well as my video on Malditoff, you can simply click the one you're interested in displayed on the screen right now. Also, if anything was unclear, please ask me in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer. Until next time!